Okay, so here we are in front of the living fence again. I have the water pump going in the background, so please forgive that background noise. But I wanted to show you some late summer pruning. The purpose for this pruning is I want to get some of this height down. I really don't want those roots spreading any further. I want to clean the fence up and I'm harvesting for baskets. With baskets, they need to dry for a month and then you rehydrate them. You don't just use them green, otherwise they shrink too much. So. What I'm going to be really careful of is not to cut out the pieces that are the main parent plant. I want to get sub shoots, not, not what's already surviving and doing really well. And this part right here is a newer section that actually took two or three years to get started. I had to keep putting sticks in the ground, keep watering it, and eventually this year, now we have some new growth that'll make a good fence. So. It would be easier if I just had those little hand clippers, but I couldn't find mine. I think the girls have been out using it to uh, try and get pears from over the side of the fence. So, I have a few in here that are kind of bending a little bit anyway, and I really don't want the fence to be any higher than about chin level on me. I want the cut ends all together and the tips together. So I'm going to stack them like this. But I'm also going to go through and just take the tops off. And I'm going to leave this as mulch. If I was feeding rabbits right now, I would take it to rabbits. If I really felt motivated, I would take it to the goats. But I do want to make sure not to cut down uh, prematurely anything that I'm going to be using for baskets. So if I'm not sure if I need that one, and I think that one, that one there is actually part of the fence. So I am going to cut it short because I'm going to leave it there. And I'm not going to cut any that are so tiny and narrow that I couldn't use them in the baskets because I need to leave some leaves on the tree so that it can feed itself. I'm going to walk down to a more heavily, uh, the word, a more heavily established, a more fully established spot and prune there. Okay, this one is a monster bush. A whole bunch of it can come out. So this will be a good place to get some of those bottom uh, sturdier frame parts for the basket. A lot of what you see back in here is actually dead wood. It's what I created my lattice work with when I first built the fence and um, it was just to give it some shape. So a lot of what you see in there is dead, not because the willow fence died, but just because I used dead wood to begin with. Okay, all these little sprouts that you see everywhere, this is the reason why you don't want to let your willows get too big, is because the happier they are, the more roots they spread, and when those roots spread, you have um, little trees coming up off of them. So it's good for us because we need more mulch and they're not that hard to take down, but if you're in an area that gets a lot of water, unlike us, then it might not be a good idea to have willows. Um, this area is heavily mulched, but it's also somewhat watered. So I have to go through and cut all these down. Again, they can be fed to goats and rabbits. Okay, so she looks pretty shaven and shorn, a little bit bare. But now that I have a lot of the top growth off, it will stunt it so the roots aren't spreading any further. And I'm gonna make sure and give it really, really thorough watering for the next month while we still have water. The reason for that is I don't want it to die and I want to encourage the younger, straighter plants to go ahead and grow now that I've kind of cut back the crooked ones. It's really hard to weave a fence once it starts to branch off. You want it to be one single piece 
And what happens is when you clip them, that's when they branch off. And so with this particular fence, I can't really weave it anymore. They're thick, they're gnarly. It was a big experiment. I do like it as the hedge that it is rather than a woven fence. Um, I think a woven fence would look amazing, but because I didn't know what I was doing when I started, it's not gonna happen at this point. But um, it does give some shade to the animals and it gives a nice windbreak. It adds texture to the property. And, um, but now that I have it down a little bit, our renters' tomatoes will be happier too. So if you'd like to know how I started this fence or how I pruned it at certain points of the in the year, go ahead and check out our other videos. I'm not exactly sure how to show this to you guys. I'm underneath the pear tree and next to the grapevine and the horseradish and the plum and the uh, Siberian pea shrub. Maybe we'll see if we can take you off the tripod and take you around. Okay, so grapevine, horseradish, plum, pears, honeyberry. Let's see if we can show you grapes. Grapes. Um, these little uh, Siberian pea shrubs have already shot their seeds and I harvested quite a few of them. That is a, oh goodness, what are you called? It's a seasoning like celery. Uh, Siberian pea shrub, edible root, cockleburs or burdock, whichever you like to call them. There's also a uh, raspberries in there somewhere. I should come cut these down. Blackberries, raspberries. I haven't tried this apple yet this year. I tried the other tree. Um, this is one that the uh, there's my drip line made out of an old hose. The raised bed. Raspberries. Crab apple tree, butterfly brush, more baby bunnies, raspberries, strawberries, nineteen cherries, other apple tree. I need to come in and cut back all these water sprouts. The apple tree that came back from the root after the goats killed it, and pear tree. These pears are fantastic. I'm just trying to figure out if I can remember what this particular one was called. This one almost got killed by the goats too. And here we have aronia, filberts, cherries. Um, and then over here we have the nankeen cherries and more aronia. That's the black one. You need to eat those when they're black, not when they're purple. Um, Otherwise, they're really, really bitter, but they're really good when they're black. And then over there is the autumn olive. It tastes wonderful. And the reason that these other raspberries are looking a little bit sad is that I have the water set up in a spot that doesn't reach everything. And then this is one of the spots we kept the goats for a couple years, so it looks like the renter's squash and green beans really like it back here. We do have a drip line. Okay, it is raining for the third or fourth time today, and this is a better a better way to do a fence, a willow fence, a living fence that you want to be able to braid. They were all put in at the same age, the same length, same time. So they're all equally pliable, none of them are gnarly. And even though I never really braided a fence before, I think I can figure it out. And what I'm going to use is my nasty neon pink marking tape because it stretches and it won't hurt the plants.
And I remember now why you had to put two in each spot. The reason is, if you're gonna do one of those lattice weaves, you need to have two in each spot because one is gonna go this way and one is gonna go the other way from each spot. Otherwise, what you have is one that only leans this way or that only leans that way, and there's, there's nothing to do the cross. So the problem is, I did do that. I did put two in each spot, and the problem is, is that not all the willows survived. I can show you, I can show you that this stand here survived, but it didn't survive anywhere else in that whole swale. We have maybe five total that are not in this little strand right here that I'm standing in front of. So this was the, this was the one that really survived. It got enough water, it got enough manure, and it was in happier soil. Some, the, the soil that is here is not rocky. This is the only spot on our property that isn't rocky. But once you go down about six inches, you hit a solid layer of, I don't know if it's clay or just really, really hard silt, but I believe it's clay. And um, it just, water just perches on the top and never goes down into it. It, even with a rototiller, even with a shovel, it's very, very difficult to get through that. And so the roots of the willows can't get through it either. And they're starved for water, starved for air, starved for nutrition. So what I'm planning on is I will once again cut slips and stick them all along the swale and we'll start over again. Now that there's an actual, um, now that there's an actual uh, chain of, of growth, now that there's some actual uh, biodiversity, some plants in there that feed other plants like the comfrey, the mint is doing well, um, this space gets watered really, really well. And when we first started, we used lots and lots of rabbit manure. But you can see it's not teeming with life yet. It kinda is because some of the things that I planted are really, really hardy, like the mint, the comfrey, and the willow. The fact that they haven't spread further than they have just shows how poor the soil is here. But the reason I'm doing this is to see what makes the difference. Is it unlimited water? Is it rabbit manure? This is chicory. Um, is, it, is it unlimited water? Is it manure? Is it the kind of plant that I put in? Or is it a combination of everything? And from what I can see, what it really comes down to is chop and drop. I need more mulch. And this year, because this is the renter's space, I haven't come up and chopped and dropped. See, I ha also have some asparagus. I have several of these all over the place. So um, what it really comes down to is I need more cover for the soil. I need more food for the soil. It doesn't necessarily have to be animal manure. Comfrey, um, grass, hay, anything like that makes a huge difference. Yes, I do see weeds here, but it's a positive sign for me because it used to be that this is all we had. It's just that. And now we have this, so I do need to come in here and get that thistle out. I don't want thistle in there. This is definitely my science experiment. Do you like the hat? I forgot I was wearing it. <laughs> definitely my science experiment to see, uh, did the deeper part of the swale work better? Did the shallower part work better? What, what really made the difference? And, it's a huge learning curve. Um, one of the other things, one of the other things that we're fighting is voles. It's one of the reasons that we water so heavily once a week is to collapse their tunnels so that they're not coming back. It's just too hard for them to rebuild in a week's time. So in the spots where we don't get standing water, that's where the voles came in. So that's why some of these parts of the swale are actually very, very shallow now. It's because the voles went in there and made their tunnels there. So um, anyway, I love permaculture because it allows me to experiment and I'm super excited to hear what you guys are doing. Did you do a willow fence? Do you have a different kind of hedge? Um, I'm excited to put all sorts of other things in here. So we'll talk to you later.